All right, Dave, last time I saw you was a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, down in the States in Minneapolis. I was sitting on a bench, and all of a sudden this guy walks by me and throws a Showdown Joe insult, and lo and behold, who it was? The Crow, David Loazzo. How's it going, my man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing okay. So big fight coming up. Uh, you know, you're taking on Solomon Hutchinson. Uh, you're headlining the XMMA 5 event. Uh, tell us your preparation a little bit for, for Solomon. Uh, actually, actually, the opponent was changed. It's not Solomon anymore. So, because the, the, there's been problems with with the with the visa and all that. So right now they're still looking for an opponent. So, uh, yeah, it's not it's not a uh, no opponent has been confirmed yet. But you're still training, hoping to headline that event, correct? Oh yeah, I'm headlining that event for sure. Now, are you also are you also an owner of the event, or are you just strictly fight for the event? No, I'm. I'm Part, I'm part owner of the company. I have uh, I have shares in, in uh, Extreme MMA. You know, I started it off. Me and Steve Clavo started off that that uh, that show. You know, that organization. So um, so yeah, uh, I'm uh, I have shares in the company for sure. So talk about putting your butt on the line and putting your whole career on the line. You're you're headlining your own event. Any any extra pressure added to yourself in doing so? Oh man, it's, it's fighting is what I love, man. I enjoy I enjoy every second of it, you know. It's, it's no no pressure at all, man. It's all about, you know, there's one goal is to go in there and destroy my opponent, you know, and, and, and that's all I'm focused on, you know. Not no pressure, just just excitement, you know. So now that, now that you know, Solomon's gone and, and basically you've got to find another opponent due to the visa situation, what does that mentally do to yourself in training? Do you change it up a little bit because perhaps you were focusing on something Solomon had a weakness on? No, no, no. It's all, it's, it, we always train. We train the same. We train the. We change the strategy around, you know. But uh, but uh, it, you know, I have a lot of experience, so it's easy for me to adjust to different fighters, you know. Now you talk about experience. You fought everywhere from events, you know, like in from Montreal, UCC, TKO, all the way to the UFC, Elite XC, and of course, you know, hardcore championship fighting. Now your 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 own event. The experience over the years, the game has changed. And I remember, you know, being there for your very first fight against Justin Bruckman way back in June of 2000. That's over yeah. eight years ago. And there's a different crow nowadays. And I've seen you go up and down with your career. Where do you feel your career? Where do you feel your career is at right now versus what's going to happen in the future? Huh. I'm on. I'm on my way back up. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, it's like a trampoline, you know. Like I, I went down and then boom, I'm jumping up back up. You know, I'm just gonna reach highs that I've never reached before. I know that. I, I, I'm sure of that. You know, I, I train so hard. I'm so disciplined. You know, even through the ups and downs, I never thought of stop like quitting fighting and 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 I never stopped training. You know, I always kept training with the with the top the top guys around. You know, so so. So everything's going to fall back into place, man, for sure. Well, definitely. There, there, there are thousands and, and, and thousands of, of Crow fans out there. I, I hear about them all the time on my own radio show here, as well as we were, when we were down in Minneapolis. I mean, everyone knew who the Crow was. Everyone was loving the Crow. And the one question you kept asking, people, or people kept asking you because you were at a UFC event is, is there going to be a chance when David Loazzo will be back in the UFC? Oh, for sure, man, for sure. We, for sure I'll be back, man. <laughs> Like, 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 every time I'm down there, everybody's asking me the same question, you know. It's just about, a, of, of, you know, the right timing. You know, it's, uh, my management's been pe- speaking to, to, to Joe Silva and Dana White, and uh, all they need is uh, just had a couple of wins, and, and uh, I'll be back on the show, for sure. Well, you're definitely there with a couple of wins because you're three and one in your last four fights, and many people argue that you're actually really four and zero in that fight because that fight with Jason Day, you know, could have went either way. So, with a couple more wins, we probably see you back in that 185 pound division, which is starting to get pretty stacked. Yo, what you, 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 saw, you saw that fight with Jason Day? Did I see it? I did. Yeah. And you saying it could have went either way? You, you, you're crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're crazy, man. Well, so you're, you're a firm believer that you won that fight. Uh, oh, 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 you, you know what? I understand, man, because because you, you you're like you interviewing people and fighters, so you need to be you need to you, you can't you can't just take my side. I understand, man. I understand. Why are you putting me between you, gotta, you and Jason? You gotta you gotta be you gotta be professional. Hey, man, Jason's my boy, man. I, I love the, I, lo- I love. 
love the guy, man. He's, he's a great guy, great human being, you know. But but it's you know competition. I saw the fight, watched the fight. I was like, man, that's embarrassing for for any any judges, you know. It's, any, all three judges that that were there should be ashamed of themselves, you know. It's ridiculous. So if I understand you correctly, are you basically telling me right now that if Joe Silva or Dana Way were listening to this interview, that would be your first fight in the octagon? Oh, why not? For sure. And, and, you know, I'm not calling him out. It's just I'm a competitor, man, and, and I, I see things the way I see him. And, um, and I saw a robbery when I fought, when I fought today, you know. I don't, really, I don't call anybody out, man. If it happens that I have to fight him, I'll fight him, you know. But, but when we fought... I know I got robbed, and well, everybody knows I got robbed, but they just won't say it. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, you guys are both my friends, and I'd love to see you guys fight again. I just wish you guys would fight other people, but hey, a business is a business, and that's the way it goes. Now, going, going back to the situation, looking at your camp, I mean, there's all kinds of studs in that camp. You got George St. Pierre and, and you know Dennis Kang and guys like that. Faraz is helping you guys out. Talk about training with such an elite camp where some guys don't have that opportunity. What does it do to your game specifically? Well, it just, it just, uh, the, that's what I was telling you before, you know, it, it just helps you, helps so much, you know, to improve your game. That's all, that's all I've been doing, man, improving, you know, I've been, <laughs> I've been improving so much and, and we're all helping each other out. I'm training with Dennis, Dennis Kane, then George, then Patrick Cote, Jonathan Goulet, Tom Murphy. I got so many guys, man, R- R- Rashad Evans, uh, Keith Jardine, uh, Nate Marquardt, so many guys I train with. It's it's ridiculous, man. Back and forth, you know. I go to New Mexico. I go to Denver, Colorado. Train with with Nate. It's it's crazy, man. I mean, even Joey Villasenor. I train with him too. It's crazy. I got so many guys to work with. So many guys that could tell me, okay, you do you did this wrong, correct this like that. And and it's it's much. It makes my job easier, you know. You know what? And you, just those names that you list with Nate Marquardt, Villa Senor, and Dennis Kang, Patrick Cote, that's almost the elite of the middleweight division across the world. You can't help but get better. So when you look back at David Loazzo, when he lost that fight, for example, to Franklin and Swick, to where he's going to be, you know, where do you see yourself now? Because when I was talking to you at that restaurant, because we, we went out to eat afterwards after you insulted me on the middle of the streets of Minneapolis, by the way. We went out to eat, and I noticed something different in your attitude, a different look in your eye, where it was like, you know what, Joe? From now on, I'm hurting people. I'm going to go out there, and I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to hurt people, and I'm going to finish fights. Where did this come from? Just just, just be, me being fed up of, of, of going in there and, and being a nice guy, man. Just, just... Man, I've been nice for too long. I'm just fed up. <laughs> I'm just fed up, man. I, I made a difference between between sportsmanship and 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 you know doing you know doing your job, man. When the bell rings, I gotta do my job. Is just to kill this guy, destroy this guy, just tear his face up, you know. But once the bell rings afterwards, we're back to being friends. There you have it, the new and improved David Loazzo, the Crow version 2.0. David, I want to thank you very much for coming on the air, and we look forward to hopefully your new opponent and your fight September 13th. Looking forward to it, my man. All right, man. Hey, thanks a lot for your support, everybody. Appreciate it.